So what's taken up most of my attention at the moment is thinking about the programming of the buttons and switches. So I'll say a little bit about that. I'm just going to say this at a sort of overview level. I might get into a little bit of detail later on, but not enough detail for you to really treat this as a tutorial, because that just gets fantastically complex. So I'll just highlight a few of the main issues. Some of the things we're going to need to know about to do this kind of thing. Um, this, by this kind of thing I mean programming up the buttons and switches to do what we need them to do. We need to know about a thing called FSUIPC, which you might have heard of. For our purposes FSUIPC is essentially an add-on that uh, allows us an alternative way to program buttons, switches and also analog axes. Well, I'm not going to talk about the analog axes in any great detail. Um, it's the buttons and switches that we're really interested in. Now you may wonder why we need that because at first glance it duplicates something that we can already do in FSX in the controls um, settings dialog and that's true but we can only go so far. If you go into that control settings dialog you'll see all the internal FSX functions that are available and uh, that will allow you to program all the default aircraft but an aircraft like the Twin Otter from Aerosoft is um, it's not completely dependent on the built-in functionality for, for modelling things like the gauges and the systems. Some of it is built in to FSX but some of it is custom modelled which means that it uses functions that aren't available on the um, FSX menus. So while I can program things like the aileron trim for example I happen to know is passed straight through to the FSX default implementation of that. While well, I can program that onto switches on my custom panels by going directly to the FSX control setup dialog. I can't program things such as what the fire extinguishers, the, the autopilot and many other things. So, if you go into the equivalent dialogues within FSUIPC, which appears in the FSX add-ons menu, you will find a list of controls which will be quite familiar that you can map your buttons and switches to, but, but it's, a, it's a larger list. You will find um, extra things that FSUIPC itself adds in, but that's not quite the whole story. Crucially, it's an extensible list. Things can be added into that list of functions that can be hooked up to buttons and switches. So I've got to say a bit more about that in a second. I mean, it's worth pointing out you will need the paid for version of FSU IPC to do any of this. So you can't imagine that you'll get by with the, with the free version. The free version has no programmable, um, I think I'm right in saying that, functionality at all. Another piece of the jigsaw that we need to introduce here is in implementing custom gauges and functionality using the FSX SDK the programmers typically use things that are called I think they're called gauge local variables or local gauge variables or something like that. I'm, pre I'm presuming this is a something that's um, addressed in great detail and supported with tools and, and APIs and so on within the FSX SDK the implication of this for us is that we can find publicly accessible variables within the custom modules of the Twin Otter in this case. Um, we, we can find those, we can uh, then address them and we can read from them and write to them and by writing to them we can make things happen in the Twin Otter custom code. It's a bit hit and miss because it's not really I don't think it's a formal API for publishing you know, controllability features in custom designed modules, but it's become de facto um, a way of doing that. And FSUIPC has a lot of support for that. So the third piece of the jigsaw is that FSUIPC implements within it a facility for writing scripts, custom functions, uh, in a language called Lua, that's spelled L-U-A and it's uh, most people read that as an acronym because that's how it looks but we're apparently we're supposed to say Lua and Lua in FSUIPC has 
functions for reading and writing these LVARs. So that closes the loop. Uh, if you think about that, this allows you to write, in fact it almost closes the loop, I'm left to step out. Um, <laughs> I'll get to that. You can write a little bit of code in Lua that reads from or writes to a local variable within the FSX, sorry, within the Aerosoft TwinOtter code and thereby make things happen within within that code. Um, flip a switch, for example, or read the status of a switch. The last bit that I missed out earlier is that the Lua functions that you write, you can make those available in the dialog that allows you to link up functions to buttons and switches. Now what's very good news for us somebody has put a lot of work already into doing just that specifically for the Twin Otter and his name is Gunter Steiner and he's written a bunch of Lua functions that address many of the buttons and switches that we need for the Twin Otter for the Aerosoft Twin Otter Extended in a way that um, allows us to hook them up without doing any real work. Um, the work's been done for us. Now um, I've left out another thing here which is Gunter's done that in a way that uses another tool. In a way it's a tool that, uh, I mean it's an extra tool that you have to get, it's free this time, uh, it's called Linda. So in one sense it makes things more complex, you need an extra tool, it's a program that needs to run while FSX is running. But the purpose of Linda is to uh, sit on top of all this uh, FSU IPC and Lua kind of glue stuff and make it much simpler. And so Gunter's package of functions is is packaged up in a way that allows you to do that very simply. It uses a graphical user interface. That's pretty much the story. Now Linda, let's talk a little bit about Linda and Lua and Gunter Steiner. Gunter's done great work. Uh, he's implemented many of the custom functions in the Twin Otter, but he hasn't implemented all of them. Now I don't know the reason for that, um, probably part of the reason is that he's working on lots of other things for other aircraft as well, so um, I'm not in any sense knocking his efforts, you know, discovering that library of functions in a sense led directly to this machine behind me here, um, it, was, it was really the thing that pushed me into, you know, recognising that it was possible to build a completely standalone mouseless, keyboardless cockpit. So, no criticism implied at all. I, I did have a worry that uh, some of these functions hadn't been implemented because they were impossible to implement or they were too difficult. Uh, my initial experiments suggest that's not the case because I've, you know, I've, after about half an hour's experimentation I was able to implement two of the functions myself from the list of missing ones. So, um, you know, I said earlier that the um, LVARs can be a bit hit and miss because it's not it's not really a formal API. But there are tools, I mean, FS, FSU IPC itself has a tool for um, finding all the LVARs that are exposed by a particular model and and dumping them into a, a log file so you can so you can experiment with them. Linda itself has a tracer tool which is uh, first um, site appears to be a fantastic tool. I've you know I used it very successfully to very quickly find the LVARs, for example the fire extinguishers. I've pretty I think I've got the fire extinguisher working fine. And the other thing was this test button on the autopilot, um, which I've included but I discovered there wasn't a function to hook it up to. You know, immediately there's an there's an LVAR for that button and you just set it to zero or one and it and it flips the button and uh, does the function. So, great stuff. We can do all that. I have yet to do that for the, the um, all the functions that are missing. I need to go through and systematically, you know, do that. I've done some tinkering. Just sitting here and tinkering with the mouse mat on your knee isn't really the best way to do this. It's not going to require any great programming skills. But, but you know, I mean, I'm not. If you're going to get into that, it, it does require a certain technical mindset. And if you've got any programming experience, obviously that stands you in good stead. So Linda is going to feature in my implementation, I think I'm probably, uh, certainly for prototyping, not prototyping, but experimenting with the initial setup, I'm using Linda 
because it's just very very convenient to do that but there's always a but and there's a couple of reasons why we can't use Linda exclusively to do what we need to do the first reason is uh, I'm not sure how important this is going to turn out to be but I mentioned early in an earlier video incorrectly that um, FSU IPC had a limit of 10 on the number of joysticks it could handle. Actually the limit is 16. FSU IPC can handle up to 16 simultaneous joystick controllers. Remember that the Bodner boards that I'm using those count as joystick controllers. So, so the limit's not 10 in FSU IPC but there is a, the, the limit, the thing I was remembering when I, when I made that statement was there is a limit but it's a Linda limit uh, and, I'm on, and I'm already up to 10. I'm not sure what the implications of that are. My sense is it's not going to be a showstopper and isn't really going to be a, a big issue. But the other limitation of Linda is um, essentially Linda is is a, a simple to use tool for doing non-complex assignment of, of device. In fact, the N in Linda in the acronym is non-complex. Um, it's a bit of a clumsy acronym. Be honest and sometimes we need things to be complex and I'm thinking of one kind of control in particular that where the programming needs to be more complex than Linda is capable of handling so we need to get into uh, FSU IPC get a bit dirty to do that so we're just going to leave that a bit enigmatic for now <laughs> and I'm going to I'm going to talk about that in a bit more detail when we get to it